chapter 21, verses 23 through 32. You can find this on page 23 in your pew Bible. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us ears to hear your story in these words of scripture. Give us eyes to see your story in the faces of those that surround us. And give us faith enough that by your grace, we might serve you until the end of our days. Amen. When he entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question, if you tell me the answer. Then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. And he answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the, which of the two did the will of his father? They said, the first. Jesus said to them, truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Good morning, Presby's. Great to see you all here in worship this morning. Great lesson today. Riddle me this. This is a this is a interesting text that we are introduced to today. So one time my family was on vacation and I was quite young but I still remember my brother's reaction and John John you're in the back of the church raise your hand wave at everybody and go hi there's John John and we had been out early one morning my father was an early riser and I mean really early and I was not so I probably was a little grumpy at the time but he wanted us to get some sightseeing in before we went to breakfast so and I can't even remember where we were it was a one of those Nebraska or South Dakota something drivable uh, kind of trips family trips and so we went out and we did some sightseeing and we were obviously hungry because we hadn't had breakfast yet and so we went into this small town and there was only one cafe, because it said cafe, and, and the door was open. And we walked in, and, there, and we should, this just should have been our first clue. There was nobody in there. And it was very quiet. And so there was one woman, and she was off, and I saw her, like, mopping the floors. So I can kind of remember that. So we all sat down at a table, and we were a large family. And so Dad said, everybody, figure out what you're going to order. You know, if you want to eat, let's get her done. That's my father. And so we all looked at the menu, and of course, you know, kids, you know, I want pancakes and whatever. So we're all excited, and John was ready to eat. He was very hungry. And so we sat there for quite a while, and nobody came to wait on us. And the woman that was mopping the floor, she was like over here. She kept looking at us. And finally, she took her mop, dropped it on the floor, walked over to us, said, what do you want? And we went around the table and we all ordered. Second clue we should have had is she did not write it down. So there we are sitting, and my mom was sitting there, and she said, you know, we were there quite a while, and she goes, I don't smell, I don't smell anything cooking, and I ordered bacon. And my dad was like, Oh, no. So my father got up, and he walked over to the kitchen, and he looked in the kitchen, and there wasn't a soul in there. Apparently, this restaurant had closed, and this lady had been hired to just mop it up and close the doors, and my family had ventured in there on that morning. 
my brother was incensed. Oh, he was mad. I can remember that. I'm hungry. I want to eat. And we all had to go back to the campground, and my dad made us our breakfast. She took our order and didn't follow through with it. The scripture today is going to explain that to us in a different type of concept about when we are given an order from God through his word that we follow his word, right? So today, Matthew, who is a tax collector, is giving us this lesson from Matthew 21, verses 23 through 32. So we know that Matthew was a tax collector, that he was not well-liked, and he had left his previous life and occupation, and he followed Jesus. When he was called, Jesus said, come, and, and he went to Jesus. Matthew had faith, and he obeyed in Jesus, in his commands, and in his teaching. And to be obedient to God. So today we are going to study the scripture in the mindset of obeying God. Let us pray. Glorious God, we give thanks for this beautiful Sunday morning and our church family here, both in this worship space and online, who have come to worship you and to celebrate your love for all people as we celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Father, we ask that you give us pause and time to study this word and place it on our hearts and in our minds so we too may make the community that we enter a better place. In your name we pray. Amen. So the lesson that we are reading today, uh, for context, it takes place right after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Jesus has been in the temple, and this is his second day. So he, he entered the temple, and this is his second day. Before this event of scripture that we are studying today, he has overturned the tables of the money changers, those who uh, had an exorbitant price for people that were from out of town who had foreign currency to be able to give the right type of money that would be accepted in the offering of the temple. Also, people had traveled from far away and they had brought their animals for sacrifice as was their um, practice. And so they would have special priests assigned to go and they'd look at that animal and they would walk around it and they would, up. Oh, there's a blemish here. Can't use that animal. Up, oh, this bird missing too many feathers. Can't use that one. And they were bringing their very best from their home. And so what they would have to do uh, is go to those other tables and purchase animals for sacrifice. And Jesus was sick of it. He said, this is crazy. And so he had overturned the tables and he had gotten very angry and upset with these Sanhedrin priests who were just making everything. Just you have to be perfect or you're, you, you, you're not going to know God. And he had taken a break and he had been teaching children and the priests had overheard him calling him Messiah. Giving him that messianic term. And they did not like it. They already knew that they didn't like Jesus. So on this day, in this scripture, in this text, he's going to go up and he's going to challenge them. They are going to challenge him, I should say. So it's a riddle me this kind of scripture. And they ask him, who is your teacher? Who gives you the right to come here and shake things up? They want to fit Jesus into a category and pigeonhole him. They want him into the role of a rebel so that they can oust him. They can get him out. And they're just work and work and work at it all the time. And you see that in the text. So they say, who gave you the authority to do these things? And then Jesus quickly comes back to them, referring to John the Baptist. And he says, I will answer your question if you first answer one of mine. You saw John ritually cleansing people through baptism for the redemption of their sins. Did John's cleansing come from heaven or was he simply washing them at whim? The elders knew that this question was a tricky one. There was no simple answer. If they acknowledged John's ritual of cleansing from heaven, then Jesus was doing what God had intended, right? Jesus would ask that they would accept John's authority then, because if he came from God, then I came from God. 
But if they said he had dipped some people simply by his own accord in the water, they would have outraged those people who had come to believe that John was a prophet. That's a tricky one, Jesus. So they gave the answer of, we don't know. Riddle me this. Jesus had this simple question, and he said, hey, let's back up. Let's ask, let's talk about my predecessor, John. If you can tell me where his authority came from, then I will tell you where mine comes from. Checkmate, Jesus. Jesus asked this knowing full well that the answer to both questions would be the same. Neither John nor Jesus had human authority that came from God. Neither had gone to seminary. Neither had been licensed or ordained. If either John or Jesus had only true authority to claim, then it was from God. On one level, it appears that Jesus is being a bit cheeky. But on a deeper level, Jesus is simply recognizing that there is very little sense in talking to people who are so closed-minded as those priests were and elders when they, they pinned him down in that corner in the temple. They were not seeking information from him. Their minds were made up long before they approached him in that temple. Even at that, however, Jesus does not drop the conversation. He always turns things into a teaching moment. So he goes on with this little parable. We have one father, and he has two sons. When the father orders the one son to go to work, he replies, forget it, Pop. I've, I've got plans to do. I've got people to see, places to go. I'm out of here. And then he gets a little guilty. And later he comes back and he does what the father has asked him to do. And then there's the other man, the other son. He, he, the father made the same request to him. And he said, you got it, dad. I'm on my way. Don't you worry about it at all. And the father walks away from this exchange feeling probably pretty good that at least one of his boys was going to listen to him and do the right thing. But instead, that son does nothing, does not obey. Which one was right? Jesus asked them, who obeyed the father? And they answer, the first son. The answer is neither one. Neither one obeyed when the father called them to do right then and there. They took the order and walked away, didn't they? Obeying means to accept and obey when God calls you. All throughout the Bible, including the New Testament, Israel is often compared to as a vineyard. Thinking about the parable. So in this parable, when we hear the father is asking his sons to do the work of the vineyard, it is equivalent to asking people to do the work among the people of Israel at that time, whoever they were to serve. And that's where the chief priest failed. Think about it. Why did it take an outsider like John the Baptist to issue a kingdom invitation to people for them to be saved and baptized in the water? He offered an invitation to those who were marginalized, outcast. John did it first. Then Jesus took the, the challenge on and continued this invitation in his own ministry, ministering to everyone, even the small children in that temple. Jesus was always hanging out with, the chief, what, with who the chief priest considered the wrong crowd, the wrong kind of people. Those that, mm, they're sinners, can't save them, move on. Jesus was not going to count them out. That's why this table is so important to us today. The outside sinners were never asked by the Pharisees to repent, but the outsiders did. John did, Jesus did. Because the religion, the practices 
of the Pharisees and the elders was to keep them out because they were not perfect. And today, as we look at this scripture, we know that neither you nor I are perfect. And that is the beauty of Christianity that Jesus teaches us. When we receive or share the word of God, it should be to anyone who will listen to us and not just those that we think are worthy. That look good, smell good, go to the right school, drive the right vehicle, live in the right house, live in the right community, go to the right church. Right? Friends, we can't wait for other people to clean up their acts and become more buttoned down like we would have them be in our minds. We have to look into that vineyard and go. We need to obey God. When we say yes to God, the Father Jesus claims you are simultaneously saying yes to the least, to the lost, and to the lonely. God holds dear to this. So if you say yes to God, may your focus not be on your piety or on what people are going to think about you, not on simple religious practices and then be done with it, but to say yes and do what the Father asks to follow him. Today's parable isn't about an outward ritual, teaches us that an outward ritual you will not get into heaven. So if we just break the bread and take the cup and go home and live our life as we normally do and don't follow the word of God, it's just a ritual. But if we take the bread and take the cup of salvation and partake in it in this communal experience today on World Communion Sunday and represent the word of God through your community and your workspace and your school and your athletic events or wherever you are, then you are accepting the grace of God that he has offered you and you're extending it to others. Then you know God has changed you. Then you are living out God's will. You are surrendering to God's will and allowing yourself to live a life to serve his people. When we realize what it means to obey is then what we realize what it means to be a Christian. Obey. Jesus was certain of who he was, that God had called him. He was certain to who he was preaching to in the temple that day. He was leading people to God. Jesus was obeying the word of God. Friends, we tend to make church fit into our schedules. And Jesus fit into something that we are comfortable with. We all do it. I'll partake in this activity. I'll do this. But I can't do that right now because I've got so many social activities to to do. I, I know I need to obey the word of God. But this pleasure, this temptation is just gnawing at me. And I need to turn my back on God. We tend to accept part of the Last Supper, the ritual. But we do not live out a life of sacrifice. And so it's good. I'm not here to shame you. I'm here to celebrate that the Lord's table offers those who repent to come to him. It's good to acknowledge that and say, you know what? I've not been obeying God. I give thanks for this table today, and I celebrate the salvation that he offers. I will take God's order, and I will deliver on it. Can you do that? Can you do that for me this week? Amen. My prayer for you is that you will obey the word of God. The lesson today on obedience is a wake-up call who all who come to the table, not just in this worship space, but for everyone around the world as we discussed with the the youth today. Let us come to this table loving one another, caring for those who are marginalized, and welcoming the sinners, and offering the knowledge of the cup of salvation. This is World Communion Sunday. This is a great time to start. Amen.